Okay. I guess we're streaming. Yeah. Oh, crud. To a real slow start tonight. We were uh, kind of really screwed up here for a, a while, but now we're going. Let's see, we're only 20 minutes late. So, Andrew, thanks for hanging with us. So, uh, yeah, we got some new software, and of course, it doesn't work according to plan. <clears throat> So anyway, I uh, hope everybody's doing good. I see we've got, I guess, it just Andrew on here speaking his mind. That was called For the Miles Davis Tune. And it's a fun little tune. Patrick Evans. We are here in funny, sunny Fresno. Drink up, Pat. It's later than you think. So I uh, did book us a gig in Fresno. I think it's um, 
Thursday, September 16th. So, Pat, it's at Lucy's if you want to come. I also started a uh, guitar night that's going to be opening up at in the Central Coast at a place called Amsterdam. And uh, we are going to be, let me get this fan adjusted. Uh, it's a guitar night. So the started off, we're going to have three guitar players, me and Mike, Dana and Pat Kelly. And we're just going to have some fun and play some guitar. Hi, Kirby. Tom Johnson. Hello, sir. Thank you guys for watching. So anyway, um, yeah, we're going to, uh, it's kind of like, uh, I hope it's a be like John Pisano's guitar night, and we'll bring up guests from uh, all over the place, and uh, it should be good, good fun. Calvin, hi Calvin. So tonight, um, Wes has been working behind the scenes here, trying to get this thing going. Ay ay ay. The audio should sound considerab considerably better. Yes, let, what do you guys think? The audio should be stellar, <laughs> I hope. Or better than it was. Um, so anyway, that was uh, It's a Wonderful World, which is a nice little tune, right? You should have that in your repertoire. Um, tell you what, why don't we start off with a lesson, shall we? And uh, let's take a look at a jazz lick. You guys got your guitars? Get your guitars because this is a very, very cool jazz lick. There's what it looks like. <laughs> Here's what it sounds like. It's over a G minor, C7, F major 7. So 2 5. Okay, let's do it slow. All right, so look at it this way. Here's a, a B flat major seven. And what we're doing is we're going and then up to the major seven. 
And the B flat major seven is a sub for a G minor seven. And then, so that's the first four notes. Next four. Pull off. So, isn't that a nice sound? Next. So the first measure is second measure is nice lick, huh? So a two five one in the key of F. Cool, huh? So the guitar I'm playing here is uh, the Heritage five fifty, which I acquired not too long ago, and um, what uh, I think we showed it last week, didn't we, Wes? This guitar. Uh, I don't remember. Heritage 550, they don't make these anymore. Press top 17 inch, 25 and a half inch scale length. Uh, so you've got a couple of, uh, but this is uh, uh, maple, maple press top, okay? And it's in beautiful shape. I'm gonna let it go. And um, it's a 2000, 15, something like that. So, gosh, it's pretty new. But if you take a look at what's hanging on the wall up there, we have got a Guild X500. And we're going to take a look at that puppy right now. <clears throat> now, the X500 is a 17-inch guitar. It's real fat. It's uh, three and a half inches fat. But it's got a 24 and three quarter inch fretboard. And uh, that's kind of nice in a 17 inch to have the smaller fretboards. You know, it really bothers me though is having the strap button right there. That just drives me nuts. Because it pulls on your neck. So look at how big this thing looks, huh? So yeah, see how wide it is? It's This is the same depth as an L5. Um, it's spruce top. It's a two pieces of spruce pressed together, form an arch, and uh, try to get my strap on. And that's the guitar. Um, ebony fretboard. It's got uh, sound, huh? Okay, um, yeah, it's got a real sweet voice, and this neck is super easy to play. It's just a beautiful guitar. 
And the 25 and a half inch scale is, uh, fits my hand. I might have to start going to it more. Um, Calvin had a question. Did the heritage come with the finger tail piece? Yes, it did. So your 575, does it have the H tail piece? What is the H tail piece on it now? If it's the H tail piece, you got to move. You can't just put a finger one on there. Uh, you've got to move the jack. So you gotta got to do that, and that's uh, a challenge as always. Let me turn this. You know, it, it's got a master volume here. throaty sound. Hi Richard, how are you? Um, I miss the guitar of the uh, I missed the year of the X500. Are you selling it? Uh, yes, I suppose I am. Uh, oh, oh, the year. I don't know. I think it's a 96. Um, If you, Calvin, you have the H tail piece, you've got to rethink that because you're going to have to move the jack. Let's look a little more at this. Sorry to be jumping all around the place. So this is in gorgeous shape. Uh, it's got a little wear on the pickups. Maple, it's laminate maple maple sides and back spruce top laminate spruce top for strength so uh, it's a sweet sweet guitar <laughs> it looks huge in the pictures there uh, let's play a song on it shall we Wes I think we shall let's do a song called um, It's called the work song, and it's part of the JGI course. Uh, it's almost goes into a minor blues. You'll recognize it. I'm sure you know it. Um, okay, I think it's right here. We'll see how it goes. Thank you. 
record is jacked up. Yeah, there's the there's the work song. So anyway, um, yeah, these are beautiful guitars. So Richard, what do you think? You want to uh, do get rid of your 175 and get this? Excellent glass of wine from the Summerwood Winery in Paso Robles. Okay, let's do another lesson. Why not, huh? Got your guitars? Here's a lesson that I think is very cool. It's called Combining Thirds and Sixes. And basically, you know, here's a third. Right, you know. G to C is a third. Oops. G to B is a third. Duh. And then G to E, one, two, three, four, five, six, is a six. So if we go, uh, that's another six. So. Sixes and thirds are harmonious intervals. When you think about it, in, within a scale, uh, you have like one to two. Well, G to D is dissonant. But one to three, consonant, harmonious. One to four, parallel or perfect, you know. One to five, again, stay super stable like a pillar. So they're not that, that har harmonious. One to six, very harmonious. One to seven, very disciplined, dissonant. So what? Um, so if we combine them in an exercise, let's see. We might have something that looks like this. I'm going to show you this first exercise. I have several of them in the uh, series of thirds and sixes combined. But basically what I'm doing in the first one is we're going up a third. And then from the next interval, 
I'm going up a sixth. So. Then from the third tone, up a third. The fourth tone goes up a sixth. So, so far I have. show you an exercise that I think is very very cool or right. and what we're doing in this is we are going let me let me show it to you it's number eight here on the live stream can you see that you know they can Pause it if they want to look at it. It's not, you're not broadcasting it. Kind of looks like that. Okay. Well, let me show it to you, okay? So we're going, uh, I'm going up like we're in the key of G. So I'm starting on an E minor and I'm going. And then I'm going down a six. And then I'm going up to the next uh, little um, triad within the key. So. Next. 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 And then. Okay, now actually I fingered it wrong. Let me finger it like this. Okay, we're going up a third, and then up another third, and then down. this okay there is a little technique exercise and if you could do this isn't that cool what could plug that into your playing somewhere I'm sure anybody got any questions about anything uh, I keep putting my wine in the way of the camera and Wes has to come over and by the way if you like what you're seeing uh, please drop a tip to Wes he would appreciate it um, I also want to tell you this is our last Tuesday night live stream and did you and mom talk about when we're going to do it thursday morning at some time not convenient on time thursday morning sometime thursday morning maybe around nine or ten o'clock pacific standard time and uh, thursday's mornings and uh i think uh well i First of all, I got a guitar night on Tuesday nights now, and uh, uh, we'll see how long that lasts. But our 
viewership seems to be quite high during the day. So um, if you could join me um, on a Thursday morning, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Where are we at? Oh, Wes, you want to go over to Reverb? And we're going to do a search on this guitar right here, this Guild X500. It's got a sweet sound. Just do the search for all of them. Uh, yeah, and let's take a look at all of them. So the top one there, I think, is from Russia for 3800 The next one down there, we got, what, 39 or four grand, right? And that's a natural one like this. And uh, then we have one for five. That's a white one. Um, Those are all four grand. Are they? Oh, there are. Older, huh? Well, what? 59. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, 59. That is a lot older. Yeah, this is uh, a newer one then, I guess. Um, but this, I'm going to probably, it'll probably be in the neighborhood of uh, 32, 30, 33. Something like that. So if you're interested in that before I put it out there and do all that stuff. Yeah, the Guitar Night is a live performance at a club. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to stream from there or not. I don't know. You never know. We might be able to do that. But it's uh, going to be a live uh performance at a nightclub or a wine bar I should say wine bar slash cafe so they have wine and coffee which is my kind of place so if you're in the neighborhood Kim come on over um, okay Peter just getting used to Tuesday evenings yeah I'm sorry what's for new day uh, time yes Okay, um, so yeah, that X500, interesting guitar. Check, the, I want to quick have you look at the back of the neck. Did, I don't think we showed that because it's really stellar. Love the inlays in this. It's a five-piece neck. It's got that cool-looking thing going on, doesn't it? Now, I was going to put a strap button on the uh, here because I sure like the way it feels on the heel of the guitar more than on the, the uh, sides here. It seems like it, on the sides it kind of pulls on, your, on my neck. And you know how it is when you get old. Good evening, Rich. God bless you always. Frankie, what's happening, man? Thank you for your knowledge. <laughs> it's more like it. <laughs> they, uh, I miss still all the time. Thank you, Frankie. Um, so, uh, what else is new? Uh, you know what? That last that thing I showed you might be kind of tough. Maybe I should show you a different one. Um, Let's do this one, where we're going one down on the third, and one up on a six. Boy, that kind of flows better, doesn't it?
Doesn't that sound nice? Um, yes, it does. Well, thank you so much. Oh. Don't have your glasses on. I hear that, man. I got to wear these things constantly. Um, so anyway, that, that's a nice little exercise. What else we got going on? Oh, so I'm going to try this for some weird reason. And this is Please Please Me by the Beatles. And um, so I'm starting with sixes, you know, like here's a six. And then you combine it with a third. You know, that could stand a little more rehearsal, but I just thought I'd throw that in there because of the sixes and the thirds. Did you see them? I hope you did. So uh, what a cool tune that is, huh? So the story behind the song, remember, the, the record company wanted uh, them to record how do you do what you do to me. They said, well, we can go home and write something better than that. They went home and wrote, please, please me. After they got done recording it, George Martin came out of the booth and said, congratulations, boys. You just recorded your first number one. So, okay, where are we at uh, here? Uh, uh, Rich is hosting a live. Okay, good. Thank you for posting that, Gail. Lord of the Rings. Modulation and key change. Are they the same? Yes. There are two kinds of modulations, a temporary or passing or a permanent. A permanent modulation means it modulates and then it stays in the new key until the end. Passing modulation moves and passes and then goes back to the original key. Passing modulations can be Something that can that is found in the chord progression that is naturally there. For instance, in the song here, there and everywhere. Uh, let's see. Let's see. So I'm in the key C. Now. That I'm just going to E7 to A minor would mean that is somewhat of a passing modulation. But now I'm in the key of E flat. I want, uh, let's see, I wonder. Still now in the key of E flat or C minor. And now I'm back to the home key. Get the idea? So the song in the bridge modulated to the key of E flat. So that is a passing modulation, and then it comes back into the home key of the key of C. So that's the difference. Otherwise, another uh, a permanent modulation would be like the end of Penny Lane. So we have...
So that's permanent modulation. Okay. Kim, I'll be late. It's a 20 hour drive. Where do you live, Kim? <clears throat> What's 20 hours? Hi, Ron. Yes, this is a gorgeous guild, isn't it? Very nice. So, yeah, I'm going to be selling it. I'll be doing uh, some pictures on it and stuff. Okay, where are we at now? We almost, uh, we're 45 minutes into this thing. I hope you got your glass of wine. Um, let's do a comping challenge. Last week we did one. I thought it was kind of fun. I hope you guys did too. In other words, we're taking a set of chord changes and uh, we're learning to play a 2-5-1 with them and then we're taking it through all the keys. So um, hopefully that'll be uh, something that will you can put these into your bag of tricks and you've got a, a good thing going on. All right, so this particular chord change, we're going two, five, one, and let's go back to our bossa nova beat. So this is two, five, one in the key of C. Now the way we're gonna voice it is like this. First is a D minor seven. And I play with these two notes with the same finger. What is the, the rhythm is one. And now I'm gonna go down to this C, uh, D minor. See that? So. Okay, the next we're going to play this. We're going to play uh, right here, A flat diminished, and down to F diminished, and that means it's the a G7 flat 9. So I have. Okay, so I have. And now a C major 7, and it's going to look like this. And then. So here's what the exercise sounds like. Now the, the challenge is to play it in other keys. So now we're going to go C minor. B flat minor. So we just went down in whole steps. Then of course you want to probably do it in every key like that. Here's the key of G. Okay, now let's take that same approach and transfer it over to a different string group. And that would be up here on G minor. Here's G minor 7. Down to G minor 7 like this. Looks like a B flat six to 
an E diminished, a D flat diminished, which is a C chord. All right, so we have. And then F major seven. To F major, to F six nine. Now, of course, I'm going to take it now through the paces. Going to take it now, the key of uh, F minor, uh, E flat. I should say, starting on F minor. How about key of E minor or key of D? Key of D. Okay, now the real challenge is to play one way that I showed you and then play the other way for the next key around the cycle. So the D minor is going to be like this. The G minor is going to be like this. Key of E flat. Now key of E flat. Etc. <laughs> Etc. Et you learn to play that around the cycle, and I believe that lesson is on our Guitar College library. If you would like to get it, that would be fantastic. Join up. So, um, yeah, we're going to do this in the morning. I won't be drinking wine. I usually don't drink wine in the morning. I could make an exception. Good evening from Minnesota at work, but I can watch for a while. What town are you in, Ron Lee? Ronnie Lee, he wrote a chord book. Because um, I'm from Albert Lee, Minnesota. Um, which is a beautiful little town. Um, so, yeah, you know, Wes is doing all these camera angles so you can see everything there. And... Uh, Would you use this in a key change while improvising? You mean play the chords? You mean that I just showed you? Good work if you can get it, Ron. I'm watching the Dodgers and watching Rich. <laughs> Rich. <laughs> okay, you're out. Safe, Rich. <laughs> All right, so I have on my list of songs here. Uh, yeah, please hit the thumbs up button. We get extra goodies for that, I guess. I'm going to play one, a beautiful tune that I think one of the best written songs ever. Michelle Legrand. I'll tell you some big news. Gail and I had our 51st wedding anniversary. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So I always like this song, and I always think of us together with this song, and it's called, What Are You Doing the Rest of Your Life?
So, Gail, what are you doing the rest of your life? Ah, spending it with you. Me, like you. Watching, learning, and enjoying back here in steamy, hot La Jersey. Happy birthday, Jim Rolfe. Wow. Happy birthday, Jim Rolfe. Well, you guys, I think, you know, that's about it. Do we have any other questions about anything? Um, Dana Duvall must have been married very young. Yes, we were. 18. <laughs> Crazy, huh? We kind of grew up together. Because um, we knew each other before that. Obviously, you know somebody before you get married, right? Is, or is, does it work like that? It didn't in World War II, right? You know somebody for two weeks and then you got married. You know, the reason is because if you got killed, you had to give your life insurance to somebody. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Sorry, we are off to a slow start. We'll see you next week, Thursday in the morning. So stay tuned. And again, uh, thank you, Wes and Gail, for helping out and doing this stuff. And thank you guys all for watching. And uh, we will see you later. Bye for now. <laughs>